Hello and welcome to part three of biotechnology. In this short lecture we're going to be looking at a very new technology that um, was discovered just in the last I would say maybe last 10 years. Uh, it's very new, it's very exciting technology and this is called the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, uh, system and how CRISPR works. This is again based off of bacterial immunity to bacteriophages. Uh, until the last maybe 20 years they didn't really know that bacteria actually have an immune system to bacteriophages, to these viruses. And bacteria have the ability to remember phage DNA. So they not only have an immune system, but they have memory in their immune system. And when they get infected by a phage and they're able to break it down with their restriction enzymes, they will take pieces of that phage and they will incorporate them into a protein referred to as Cas9. And um, other, there are other Cas proteins associated with this system as well. But Cas9 is a nuclease. It's a protein that is capable of cutting DNA. And Cas9 will, can be genetically modified to edit designated or designed regions of an actual genome. So scientists are able to take uh, the region. So the first, let's take a look real quick at this diagram and then I'll show you a video that probably will explain it much better than I can. So in step number one, we first need to know that we have a target DNA and that it, um, the target is the DNA sequence that we are looking for. So that's what's going on right here, that's part one. Part two is this big green blob there showing here, that's the Cas9 protein. And what makes Cas9 work and what scientists do is what's called the guide RNA. So guide RNA is a piece of, gen of RNA, genetic material, of a specific sequence that Cas9 has been designated to look for. That's the sequence that it's looking for to cut. So in this case, the guide RNA, instead of being a bacteriophage RNA that uh, Cas9 would be looking for, in this case, uh, researchers have designed or sequenced their own RNA. And so they're taking this Cas9, giving it a guide RNA that is specific to a gene sequence they are looking for. And they're guiding this Cas9 to come into a very specific sequence and cut. So once it cuts the DNA right there, they will also introduce to that cut or to that RNA, they'll attach to it, the sequence of the genome that they want to replace. So Cas9 or CRISPR is an editing tool. They can use this Cas9, naturally occurring Cas9 protein and genetically modify it to search, kind of seek and destroy uh, a DNA sequence that may be mutated and replace it or cause a repair mechanism to come in and to replace the DNA that is broken. So here at the very bottom, we have the two primary uses for the CRISPR system. Number two is what I just explained to you is gene editing, where we've come in, this is our recognized sequence, this is um, a guide sequence here, and um, they're uh, replacing this piece of DNA here. Now. Another form of this is called a DCAS9. Now in DCAS9, they've modified this enzyme so that it can find, it finds the actual DNA sequence, but it does not cut it. They took away its cutting ability. So it's referred to as dead Cas9. So it can still search for its DNA sequence, but it can't cut the DNA sequence. And instead of giving it um, a DNA sequence to replace with, they add a GFP protein which is that, uh, we've seen this before, green fluorescent protein or some other type of fluorescent molecule attached to it. So that wherever, wherever this Cas9 attaches to, they can put a marker on it and see it under fluorescent light. The other thing it will do is it will sit. And if it sits on this region just in front of a gene, here's our gene right here, if it sits right in front of the gene, then the gene will not be transcribed. And if that's the case, then we can, we call this a gene knockout. The Cas9 will prevent transcription of that gene and we can then um, not only see where it's located on a large chromosome, but we can also inhibit production of that protein to see what the function of that protein is in a cell. So as you can see, the CRISPR system is still very new is really quite amazing and it, there are um, a lot of possibilities 
that it can be used for, particularly in manufacturing and agriculture. There's a really big drive right now to use CRISPR in the agricultural system to take plants that required lots of water to maybe require less water so we can grow them in areas that uh, they couldn't grow before. This would allow us to um, produce more and increase plant production and, and grow plants in countries and in areas that may have difficulty growing agriculture, they can now grow it, whether it be for feedstock or for human use um, or for reforestation, all of those sorts of things. Those are, there is a big push right now in agriculture. Um, I haven't looked at any, any uh, papers yet, but there's probably some work using CRISPR going on right now with the COVID-19 virus, and they may be exposing viral DNA to CRISPR systems to try and edit that DNA to see if they can't use it for some sort of vaccine purpose. So there's lots of different uses for CRISPR, um, many that we probably haven't even discovered yet or even know about yet. Um, it is a really exciting time to be in genetics and biotechnology because this CRISPR system has opened up so many opportunities. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning about CRISPR and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.